Hey guys, welcome to Empowerment Online, where we're excited to empower you today. Join us. Amen. Well, good afternoon. This is Pastor Kevin Crawley of Empowerment Christian Center. I want to welcome you again to our Empowerment Online, our Sunday worship experience, uh, where we are bringing the word to you in your house, where you're watching on your laptop, on your phone. We have a message for you today. Uh, do me a favor while you're coming in, go ahead and make sure that you hit the share button. Uh, give us a few likes, hit a few hearts, make sure all of that's working for you. Uh, but definitely make sure that you share this, get this to your friends, to your family. Um, I believe that there's a word for you today. So uh, definitely I'm gonna, we're going to enjoy our time here today together. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into it. Uh, first of all, let's just acknowledge the fact that Pastor Tarsha did a phenomenal job last Sunday. If you missed her message, the blood still works. Go to our Facebook page, go to our YouTube page. That information is down there at the bottom. You'll see that as well. Um, in fact, go subscribe to, subscribe to our YouTube page. We want to try and uh, build that in, that page over there, build that information there. So make sure you go and subscribe. You'll be able to see the current series of sermons as well as some of our previous ones. Um, but go and check out that message. The blood still works. It was an amazing message that pa Pastor Tarsha did last Sunday. Um, and so we're going to continue in that. Um, real quick, I also want to give you the opportunity to give, to give so that we can uh, go ahead and get into the word. Um, if you are giving, and we do appreciate all of the support that our partners, uh, whether you're an older partner with us that has been with us for some time, or a new partner just discovering who we are, we appreciate all of the partners' gifts that have uh, been given to help us to do what we're doing. We still have a building that we're still looking to move back into when all of this is over, uh, and that helps us to stay on track with that, as well as the other things that we're doing to reach this city and impact this community. Amen. So we have a couple of different ways. You can one text to give 602-610-0070. Text the word give and it'll follow, give you instructions for that. You can also visit our website empowerphoenix.com. Click the give now link and you can go ahead and give there. We also are on an app. If you go into your Play Store or your App Store, you can click the or download the Ministry One app and you can find Empowerment Christian Center there. Give through that. And also, if you're giving cash by Cash App, we have a Cash App as well. It's dollar sign Empower PHX. So plenty of ways to give. Your giving is definitely appreciated. We thank you for all of our givers um, that have continued to support us even when we're not meeting in a building. You still have been faithful in your supporting and your tithing and your giving, and we honor you for that. Amen. So I want to jump into our word today. I want to jump into the message that I have for you today. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we celebrated Resurrection Sunday. A few weeks ago, we celebrated um, the resurrection of Christ when all of our sins were atoned for. We celebrated the fact that we had been restored back to the Father, right? Um, and it was through the sacrifice of Christ. It was through that that you were restored back to a place of having relationship and fellowship with God. But here's the thing. In order to understand restoration, you have to understand what you had. You can't really, uh, uh, really grasp the concept of restoration until you recognize that there was something that you had that you lost and now that you're getting it back, right? If you, if you tell me that uh, I lost a, a keychain, if I didn't know I had it and now you've restored it, it really doesn't mean a whole lot to me. Great, I have that, awesome. But if it was something that had some value to me, if it meant something to me and I lost it and now you're telling me that it's been restored to me, it's given back to me, I'm going to appreciate the fact why, because I knew what I had and what I lost, right? Understand that cars that are restored, you have to understand what the car originally had, what it originally looked like in order to restore it. In other words, you can't restore a 1967 Mustang. I understand that's a, I'm not really a car person, but I understand that's a really uh, uh, collector's item, right? You can't restore a 1967 Mustang, Ford Mustang, looking at a, a Ford Model T, which was the very first car built, right? You have to have in mind what that looked like, right? So what that 1967 Mustang looked like, in order to restore it, you got to understand what it looked like, amen? So if I'm getting something back that was lost, I have to understand and value what I lost in order to understand and appreciate the restoration, right? I've got to understand that. So in order to understand the, the restoration that Christ offers, you have to understand what you are having restored. Think about that for a moment. You've got to think about what it is when we talk about you have been restored, that Jesus Christ offers restoration. What does that mean? What does that mean to you? What does that mean as, uh, as you are a believer now? What does that mean for you? In Genesis, we see the original intent of mankind. So we've got to go back and look at what was lost 
and then also look back so once we understand what was lost now we have an understanding of what we've gained back right so we see that man was created in the image and in the likeness of god and he was designed to have fellowship and communion with god right we see in the first few chapters of genesis what we see is that god and adam had communication god and adam talked they would have conversation they would they would as i say with my guys they would chop it up right god and adam would have conversations all right and when they would have conversations, what we would see is that we can also infer that Adam understood and was familiar with the fact that God walked with Adam in the cool of the day. He was very familiar with the fact that Adam, that God would come periodically and walk in the garden. Why? Because he knew the sound. You don't know the sound of something that you're not familiar with, right? I know my dogs. I have two dogs now, and I know the difference between their voices. Why? Because I'm familiar with them. So I don't get taken by surprise if I hear my dog for the first time. I know what they sound like. And so God walking through the, cool of the, through the garden in the cool of the day, Adam was familiar with that sound, and that sound triggered something in him. Why? Because they had relationship. So if we're being restored, understand that this is the base point of the restoration. The basic point of the restoration is getting you back to a point where you have communication and fellowship with God. That's a basic place that you are, you are designed to go back to. Understand, restoration means nothing if I'm worse off than I originally was. In other words, if Adam had communication and fellowship with God, and I've been restored, but I don't have the ability to have communication and fellowship with God, that's not true restoration. True restoration means that at a minimum, I'm set back to where, the way things used to be. I'm set back to how things were originally. And so Adam originally had, what, fellowship and communication with God. And because we've been restored at a base level, guess what? You and I, we have fellowship and communication with God. Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection did the basic thing of opening up the door for us to have communication, connection, and familiarity with God. And you did nothing to earn it. So understand this. The problem that I think too many of us have is that we have gotten so sin conscious and not God conscious. We've gotten more sin conscious and looking at ways we messed up when understand your restoration had very little to do with you. Your restoration had nothing to do with you really because you were restored. Many of you were restored even before you were born. You just had to acknowledge that Jesus paid the price for it. You just had to acknowledge that Jesus did the work of restoration to get you back where you could have the fellowship and the connection and the communion with God. Amen? That's just the intro. That's just the intro introduction of where we're going today. Amen? Let's get over to Hebrews chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 6 says this, But now Jesus, our high priest, has been given a ministry that is what? Far superior to the old priesthood. For he is the one who mediates for us Get this, a far better covenant with God based on better promises. In other words, what Jesus did, he didn't just get us back to zero. But now he's what? Negotiating, he's mediating, he's getting us a better deal. Have you ever been in a situation where you're buying a car and you go in there and they're telling you the price is what? Price is this and you what? Negotiate a better deal? You're like, look, you got to throw in at least a couple of oil changes for me. You got to throw this in for me. Why? Because the basic price is good. But if I can get something better, that's what I really want. And so Jesus has negotiated. He's mediated a better, prom a better covenant for us built on better promises. Let's then get to Acts chapter 1 verse 8. It says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses telling people about me where? everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. I want to speak to you today from a thought called activate. In fact, go ahead and type that in there right now. Type in the word activate. And while you're typing that, you still have time to invite your friends, invite more followers. You type in the word there, activate. I want to speak to you from a thought today called activate. Amen? Understand this. In the period after Jesus' resurrection, Acts 1 tells us that he walked the earth and appeared to his disciples several times. And during the time they spent, his mission was twofold. One, the scriptures tell us was, what to, was to prove that he was indeed alive and then also to tell them about the kingdom of God. In other words, after he's come back from the dead, after he's experienced and has been resurrected, after he comes back to life, 
He spends his time with the disciples, with his followers. Now he's doing something a little different. He's one, proving to them that he is alive, that he is now he's still in existence, that he still is walking the earth. So remember, we read in the scriptures where Thomas didn't believe it, and the disciples were like, if that's really you. And so now Jesus has spent this time after crucifixion, after the resurrection, and before he sends to the Father, he spends this time doing two things. One, proving to his people, to his followers, to the disciples that he's still alive, and he's talking to them about the kingdom of God. Understand that when the Bible mentions the kingdom of God, it is not talking about a place. When the Bible speaks to kingdom of God, what it's really referring to is who it belongs to and how it operates. In other words, what is the culture of the kingdom of God? And so understand this, that when he talks about, he's, the scriptures tell us that he is teaching them about the kingdom of God, he's still giving them clues as to how the kingdom of God operates. He's still telling them about how God wants to handle things. Because understand, the kingdom of God refers to who it belongs to and the way that it operates. Amen? So Jesus, understand this, before he had been, uh, been crucified, before his death, burial, and resurrection, Jesus spent many, much of his time doing demonstration. He was demonstrating what the kingdom of God was like. He was demonstrating the, the, the power and the authority of God. He was demonstrating it by what? By the miracles that he did. He was going around healing the sick. He was delivering people from demonic possession and oppression. He was doing all of these things. Why? Because he was demonstrating the power of God. He was demonstrating the kingdom of God. But now after his resurrection, do you know he only did one miracle after that? He only did one miracle. And that was a, a miracle that was similar to the one that he had did with the disciples before. And that involved the catching of fish. You can read that in the last chapter of John. I believe that he only did one miracle then because it was part of him revealing to his people again, to the disciples, this is who I am. Remember when I helped you catch those fish before? I can do it again. But now he was preparing them. Now he was getting them ready. Why? Because they were about to shift. They were about to move from being disciples to being apostles. Their discipleship really never ended, but now they were stepping into a new role, being apostles. They were the ones that were now being sent out to communicate the kingdom of God across the earth. And so he was spending more time, not in demonstration, but in teaching. He was spending more time telling them about what they're about to face and what they're about to walk into. That's what he spent his time with in the last period after his resurrection until his ascension. So he goes this and does this. Why? Because things are about to shift. Here's what I believe. I believe many of us, we are about to experience a shift in some things. There are some things that you're about to experience that you are about to shift from just being a church partner, being a church leader. You're about to shift from being uh, a, an employee to a business owner. There are some things in your life that God is about to shift. But it takes you being submitted and hearing what God has to say. So Jesus, knowing that a shift is about to happen, he does what any good teacher will do. He gives you the last bits of information that will best prepare you for what's ahead. Think about it. When you were in school, right? Your teachers spent, they would spend the entire semester teaching you different things. And then when it got to the finals, when it got to the time when you were about to prove the fact that you had learned and, and, and done well in the class, they spent more time, what? Reviewing the information that you needed to know to pass the test. Jesus was spending this time with the disciples, getting them prepared to pass the test. Jesus was spending this time getting them prepared so that when they go out, they, they went out, they would know what they were facing. They would know that what they were coming up against. They would know how to operate as uh, representatives and ambassadors of the kingdom of God. So in Acts 1.8, what we see is that he says that the, after, that the power of God will hit. After the power, excuse me, after the Holy Ghost is given to them, they will have power. In other words, he's saying you're about to move into activation. You're about to be activated. You're about to move from just being trained to now going out and doing what you're commissioned to do. You're now being activated for duty. And so he was saying that after the Holy Ghost has come upon them, they'll have power. He was essentially saying, I'm a bit about to send the power that you need for the role and the plan for which you have been born. For the thing that you have been activated for, I'm giving you the power and it's about to hit your life. I am sending the resource that will help you in your new role and in your new function. Understand, when you get ready to move to a new level, you need something else that you didn't have at the previous level. 
When you're about to go into a new level, there are things that you need at that new level that you didn't need at the previous level. When you moved into high school, you needed, many of us, we probably needed one of those special ca graphing calculators, right? Your school list changed when you got into a higher grade. There were things that you needed when you moved into ninth grade that you didn't need in third grade. So understand, when God is saying that the Holy Spirit has come, and he was telling the disciples this, he's saying, you're about to get an upgrade. There's something that's about to hit your life that you need the Holy Spirit for. I'm getting ready to go away, but you need something that's going to be able to give you what you need while you're here fulfilling your mission. You've been activated. Amen? So remember, if restoration is about getting you back to zero, Jesus accomplished that on the cross. If it's just about getting you restored, Jesus did that on the cross. After that, the disciples could have gone on and not needed anything else because what? They had been restored. But the fact that they needed the Holy Spirit means that that was part of the better covenant built with better promises that they needed. They needed something that was going to not just be around them, teaching them as they went across, uh, across the Middle East there. They needed something that was going to be inside of them, something that was going to teach them, that was something that was going to give them counsel and give them wisdom. That same Holy Spirit that they needed is the same Holy Spirit that you and I need now. So the Holy Spirit is the added benefit. Get this. The Holy Spirit is what points to Jesus, and Jesus is who points to God the Father. Understand this. It's, it's like a straight line. If you see the Holy Spirit, then you see Jesus. If you see Jesus, then you see God the Father. Remember Jesus would always say, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Why? Because everything he did pointed to God the Father. Well, the Holy Spirit reveals who, more of who Jesus is. And when we understand more of who Jesus is, we get a better understanding of who God the Father is. And so understand that the Holy Spirit was given to you and I. Why? Because we need it to be activated to do what God has called us to do. So understand this. The Holy Spirit is given not just for the running, not just for the shouting, not just for the falling out. Yes, that is all wonderful and amazing and in the appropriate church setting and amen. But however, the Holy Spirit is more than just that. The Holy Spirit is more than just goosebumps. The Holy Spirit is more than just a chill that you feel every now and then. The Holy Spirit is more than just a quickening and a bucking. The Holy Spirit has been given to point you to who Jesus is. The Holy Spirit has been given to help you with your assignment. The Holy Spirit was given to complete what Jesus was doing with the disciples. Jesus was teaching them about the kingdom of God. He was teaching them the ways and the culture about the kingdom. So if the goal of the Holy Spirit is to teach you the ways and the culture of the kingdom of God, just like Jesus taught the disciples, it must be because God is wanting to activate you beyond your current place. The fact that the Holy Spirit has been given and that is freely available to all that seek and all that ask is because God wants to give you the thing that you need for the assignment that you have. He knows that you have been activated and the Holy Spirit is there to give you the power so that your activation works. Amen. God is wanting to activate things that are already dormant inside of you. Get this now. The disciples were already fishermen. When Jesus called them, he simply said, I will make you what? Fishers of men. So Jesus said, I'm going to take what's already inside of you and I'm now going to show you how to use it for the kingdom. Understand this. When you think about who you were, who you were crafted to be, who God designed you to be, he told Jeremiah, I knew you in your mother's womb. I knew you when I formed you, and I formed you with the purpose of being a, a, a prophet to the nations. So God already has put inside of you the gifts, the talents, the abilities that you need to accomplish your assignment. But what the Holy Spirit does is comes along and gives you the power to activate what's inside of you. He gives you the power to activate the tools, the resources, the things that are inside of you, the skills and the abilities that are inside of you so that you can do what God has called you to do. When Jesus called them, he called them so that they could now move into what was already there. Get this, my laptop, this laptop here, right? It has the ability to do a lot of different things. However, if there is no power, it doesn't function right. It doesn't fulfill its purpose. If there is no power that is ever given to my laptop, then what happens is that it essentially is a paperweight. All it does is sits on a desk, looks cute. It, has, it serves no purpose. It holds no value until what? There is power given to it. And even when there is power given to it, if I don't 
periodically connected to power again, if I don't periodically get it connected with power again, it has the potential to lose its value and purpose. What am I saying? You have to stay connected to who God is and who God wants you to be to fulfill the purpose that's on your life. You've got to stay connected. Why? Because if you don't stay connected, then you become useless to the kingdom. I know that's a hard thing to hear. I know that's, that's a, a difficult thing to hear. But understand this. You've got to stay connected to the Holy Spirit who stay connected to Jesus, pointing you to Jesus, who's pointing you to the Father. You've got to have counsel with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because that is the thing that gives you power to fulfill what God has called you to do. I was telling our leaders earlier this week, understand this. The fact that you are, are working at a particular place, that's not necessarily your assignment. It may be part of your assignment, but your assignment is to benefit the kingdom of God. Your assignment is to be a minister of reconciliation, to lead men and women back to the Father. That's your full assignment. Now, you have other things that you do that are components of that, but your assignment is built for the kingdom of God. So understand, you've got to stay connected and be led by the Holy Spirit so that you know which way to go. So that you know, no, I can't take that job because that's going to take me away from my assignment. That's going to take me away from being valuable to the kingdom of God. No, I can't really connect with these people over here. Why? Because it's going to take me away from who I'm supposed to be. You've got to stay connected to who God is. You are created and crafted, uniquely designed, and there is ability in you that God is wanting to activate. But understand this, if you are living your life just simply grateful for restoration, then you're missing out on the benefit that Jesus offered. Remember we saw, it said that he is what? He has, is a mediator, he's the negotiator for what? For a better covenant built on better promises. So if you're just looking at, I've been restored, you're missing out on the better. You're missing out on the free oil changes, if you will. Can, you, can, I, can, I, can I get an amen on that? You're missing out on the things that God has for you. You're missing out. In fact, type in there right now, I don't want to miss out. I don't want to miss out. I want it all. I want all the benefits. I want everything that there is for me to have. If God, if Jesus sacrificed his life for me, if God gave up his only son for me to have it, I want it. I want it all. I want nothing left on the table. It would be foolish of us to leave stuff on the table and not understand that God designed for us to have it all. But here you have to understand this. The enemy of your soul has been trying to disrupt your power. In fact, as I was preparing this sermon today, it was interesting. It was the craziest thing. Hear me. I was typing on my, on my laptop and all of a sudden the power went out. But it didn't go out in the entire house. It only went out in one location, the room I was in. I went out and I looked and I was like, did I was, you know, can we just be honest? I was like, did, I, did we pay the bills? Did, did electricity all of a sudden get off? No, it wasn't that. But I went out there and one of the circuit breakers had tripped. Here's the thing. The enemy is like that. He's trying to disrupt your power. He's trying to cause you to have a power shortage. Why? Because understand, the enemy is already upset that you got saved. The fact that you made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, he already got upset at that. But can I be honest? That's not really a huge threat to him. The threat to the kingdom of darkness is an activated believer. The threat to the kingdom of darkness is a believer that is walking in their purpose. The threat to the kingdom of darkness is a believer that is walking with the power of God to do what they have been assigned to do. That's the threat to the kingdom of God, to the kingdom of darkness. And so the enemy of your soul has been doing everything he can to try and get you to not access the power that you have available. One of the ways that he does it is he messes with your identity. He tries his best to mess with your identity. That's why when you make a mistake, that's why the enemy comes in immediately and tries to tell you you're not a child of God. You couldn't have been a child of God if you did that. Not recognizing that even as a child, I may make mistakes. But the good thing, the great thing, is that Jesus has already paid the price for all the mistakes I've made. Doesn't mean I keep running back into mistakes. Doesn't mean I keep jumping back into things and, and running back into sin. But it does mean when I've messed up, he doesn't throw me away. When I've messed up, he doesn't discard me. He still owns me as a child of his. And so the enemy tries to use the identity to get you off track. If I can get your identity confused, then you'll never walk into the fullness of who you are. So the enemy has tried to do that for many of us. It's the reason some of us went through what we went through when we were children. 
Some of us have experienced some great, some grave things, some horrible things as children. We experience things that maybe any no child should ever experience. But it's because the enemy of your soul wanted to get you off track from an early age. And so the enemy keeps throwing up different distractions and different things at your life and at your identity and at your purpose. Why? Because he does not want you to be activated for the kingdom of God. He does not want you to walk into the fullness of who you are supposed to be. And so he's going to do everything he can to get you off track. Everything he can to get you to not believe that God has a plan for you. Everything he can to believe that to get you to believe that God doesn't love you. He's going to do everything he can so that you never become activated. He throws all kind of hell at you. But if you understand that God values you enough and loves you enough and loves the gift that is inside of you so much that he sent his son before you were even born to pay the price for your sins, then you have to understand that no devil in hell can disrupt the plans of God if you don't allow him to. But you've got to stay focused. You've got to stay connected to the power source. Understand, and even if the enemy comes in and tries to trip you up, all you got to do is flip the switch back. Nope, I'm a child of God. Nope, I'm going to reaccess and reconnect the power of God to my life. Why? Because I am activated for the service of God. The enemy is afraid of, not afraid of you in your natural state. He's afraid of you in your activated state. He's afraid of you in your empowered state. He's afraid of what you'll do because if you get empowered, my God, if you get empowered, if you get activated, if you get walking into purpose, then you are now moving forward for the kingdom of God. And now there's other people that are being snatched out of hell. We talk about here at Empowerment Times, we are grave robbers. Our goal is to go in and take people out of the grave that the enemy has tried to keep them in. To cause them to come back to life in Christ Jesus. So if you have been activated, if you have been empowered, the enemy is threatened. He's not afraid of your run and your shout. Can, can we just be honest? My God. He's not afraid of your run and your shout if all you do is run and shout and go home and sit in your office and sit in your room and do not share who God is. He's not afraid of your run and your shout if you don't go into your office and into your building and pray and lay hands on the desk and, and pray and lay hands on, on the people that you know are not living for God. He's not afraid of you if you're just sitting there quietly. Yeah, I'm a believer. Yeah, I confess Christ. And, and you don't do anything to, to pierce against the, the kingdom of darkness. But when you get activated, my God, when you get empowered, when you get full of who God wants you to be, when you access that power that God has for you, when you do that, then the enemy is threatened. Then the enemy knows I, I, I can't really do nothing here. That's why he said, look, Jesus I know. Oh, my goodness. Paul I know, but who are you? Why? Because he recognized that Jesus came with power because he is the power. Paul was operating with power. But when the sons of Sceva and when those guys came in and tried to cast out devils, he said, I don't know who you are. Why? Because you don't have power. You've got to get activated. What the enemy only can do is what? To try and distract and try to disconnect. It's the reason that Paul told Timothy what? Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. There's some things in your life that you got to stir up. You thought it was dead and dormant. You thought that season was over. I'm telling you here right now, you got to stir up the gift. There are gifts that are inside of you that still have to come forth. I don't care what your age is. I don't care if you're 109. I don't care if you're nine. I don't care how old you are. If there's a gift inside of you, God wants to use it. You got to stir that baby up. Stir that thing up. Why? Because when you stir it up, when you say, God, use this thing in me, all of a sudden it starts to come out. It starts to be used for what God wants you to be used for. You've got to shift your viewpoint. My goal today was what? To shift your viewpoint on this. It was to flip the switch in your life. So that now you move from a place of inactivity to activation. Get activated in what you're called to do. Get activated in the plans of God. Why? Because when you get activated, can I help you? Your frustration will end. Your frustration will come to an end. Because some, oh my goodness, some of you are frustrated because you know that there's more inside of you, but you're not fulfilling it. Can I be honest? There are times when, when we weren't pastoring and we weren't uh, moving in ministry, I was frustrated because I knew that there was more on my life. I knew that there was something else for me to do. But when I began to move in the fullness of what God has for us, the frustration began to leave. 
I was no longer frustrated feeling like my life was a waste. Why? Because I began to understand that there was a purpose and there was a gift. And I began to access the power of that gift and access the power of the Holy Spirit to move forward in that thing. Some of you need to flip the switch so that the frustration ends. So that you're no longer frustrated by the fact that you, you're, you're not using the gifts that God has placed inside of you. There are things that you are knowing that you should be doing that you have held off on. I'm telling you right now today, get them started. So if it's a book you're supposed to write, if it's a webinar you're supposed to do, if it's a business you're supposed to build, there is something that is inside of you that God has placed a gift, an idea, and a strategy inside of you, and he's trying to get it activated. I'm telling you today, if you'll just simply begin to take the steps, God will open up more to you. God will open up more, more avenues to you, but you've got to take the step to get activated. I want to pray with you real quick. If you are, if you are in need of prayer for anything, if you put it in the comment there, uh, if you'll put that in there, we'll reach out to you. We'll get some prayer with you. But I believe that if you enter into your next season, and have not fully been activated, you will regret it. And I'm not saying that as a, 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 a bad thing. I'm saying that you'll miss out on what God has for you. One of the things that I don't want to do is get to heaven and see all the things that I could have done, all the things that were on my life that I didn't do because I was afraid to get activated in that area. I was afraid to access the power of God in that area. I was afraid to use the gifts and abilities that were inside of me for that thing. If you are breathing, there is a plan and a purpose for your life. The very fact that you are breathing and can hear my voice today tells me that God still has a plan and a purpose and it's not too late to get activated. Amen. Let's just pray. Father God, I pray right now for everyone under the sound of my voice. I pray for those that are watching live and those that are watching on the replay. I pray right now, Father God, that you begin to reveal to them, Lord God, show them, Lord God, the areas, Lord God, that you have been wanting to activate in their lives. Show them the areas in their life, Lord God, that you want to add power to their life, Lord God, that no longer will they be dormant, Lord God, no longer will they have gifts that are dormant, Lord God, but Father God, that they will move forward in the things that you have called and designed them to do. I pray that no more short, short circuit. I pray, Lord God, no more disruptions, no more disconnects, but I pray that they stay connected to you. They stay connected to the power so that they can fulfill the mission that you have assigned to them. In Jesus' name, I pray and I thank you. Amen. Amen. Just before we leave today, I do again, thank you for joining us every Sunday afternoon here at Emp for Empowerment Online. I thank you for your sharing. I thank you for your likes. I thank you for your comments. We do appreciate all of that. We also do appreciate your gifts. And again, you, if you're giving, um, you have the information as far as how to give. But we do appreciate you joining with us and connecting with us. If you would like to be a partner of Empowerment Christian Center, even though we are not meeting in our building, the church is not closed, the church is not shut down, we are still moving forward. Amen. So if you would desire to be a member of a Empowerment Christian Center, and here's the thing, you don't have to be local. You don't have to be here in Phoenix. We are accepting membership from wherever you may be. Why? Because we want to cover you. We want to speak into your life. We believe that there is something that God has for you, and we want to be a part of it. Amen? Love you guys. We'll talk to you. We'll see you again soon. Thank you for joining us today. Like and follow us on Facebook, Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Empower Phoenix. And don't forget, you can always go to empowerphoenix.com where you can find all information concerning Empower Phoenix. Thanks and see you next week.